It begins in the Garden of Eden, the very day Adam and Eve were persuaded to taste the apple and were banished from paradise. Crowley, the demon tempter in the form of a snake, watches in frustration as the first couple of people leave Eden. He was only trying to make a joke, but he seems to have overreacted. His buddy Aziraphale, the good angel, is also saddened by what happened, but he helped the intruders a little by giving Adam his flaming sword. Our days. Demons appear from beneath the earth with a wicker basket. Lurking at the edge of the cemetery, they wait for Crowley, with whom they have a business appointment. The dark angel shows up in a cool car, wearing a modern suit and dark glasses, and finally the company gets down to business. Upon learning that the basket goes to him, Crowley is not happy. Inside the box is a baby antichrist, and the demon's job is to put him in the family so he can grow up and bring about Armageddon. Aziraphale, meanwhile, is having a quiet dinner at his favorite restaurant when suddenly he is joined by the Archangel Gabriel, who warns the employee of the impending end of the world and asks him to keep an eye on Crowley. The young family heads to the monastery to give birth to their first child. On the road, the couple is overtaken by an ambulance in which Minister Dowling's wife is also about to become a mother. As both families make their way to the convent, hoping to be protected by God, the nuns discuss a plan for how they will substitute Dowling's baby for the son of Satan, whom they serve. None of the nuns expected Young to appear that night either, but there is nothing for them to do but accept the woman. Arthur, the husband of the woman in labor, is sent outside, and there he encounters Crowley, whom the man tells for some reason that his wife is in labor in room 3. All the plans of Satan's followers are confused. The little Antichrist is sent not to the minister's wife's room, but to the Young family's room. Another nun gives the baby Young to the minister's wife, deciding that he is Satan's messenger. Crowley and Aziraphale meet in a city park to discuss the coming apocalypse. The demon tells his buddy about the baby he handed over to the American diplomat, but the black angel admits that he himself is not happy that in 11 years the world will be gone and you will be without a job and without the opportunity to do mischief. Crowley persuades his rival to unite and prevent the end of the world, but Aziraphale does not want to cooperate with the demon and he has to use strong drink to convince his friend. At the same time, the young family heads home along with a newborn, unaware that he is the real messenger of hell. Deciding that the nuns have done well, one of the demons dissolves their order by setting fire to the convent. The black angel manages to persuade a friend to take on the task of raising the Antichrist to prevent the apocalypse and five years later, Crowley and Aziraphale infiltrate the minister's family to look after their son Magus, not realizing that he is not who they want. The good angel plays the role of gardener, who teaches the boy to love the world and all living things, while Crowley becomes the nanny, humming creepy songs to his ward before bedtime. The angels report to the leadership about their success in raising the Antichrist, but everyone is sure that this time Satan will take over. So another six years passed and there is less than a week until the end of the world. The angels understand that now nothing depends on them and all that is left is to wait for the appearance of the Cerberus, which will be the symbol of the beginning of the end. Day X arrives, Cerberus is released from hell, and the angels wait for the magician to name the giant dog. At the same time, the young family also prepares a birthday cake to celebrate the 11th birthday of Adam, the devil's real messenger. When the Cerberus doesn't show up at the magician's birthday party, the angels realize that they've been taking care of the wrong boy all along. The real Antichrist, meanwhile, is playing in the woods with his friends, dreaming aloud that his parents will give him a dog and he will name it Dog. Upon hearing this, the Cerberus changes dramatically in size and turns into a small dog who can hardly hurt all mankind. The bosses visit Aziraphale in his bookstore, but the angel hesitates to tell him that he has lost the real Antichrist. Crowley, too, prefers to keep quiet about it, even though the conveyor, the one who must summon the four horsemen of the apocalypse, has already been brought into the case. The mercenary brings the first package to the war, and she, with her sword slung over her shoulder, prepares to bring about the end of the world. The story goes back a bit, to the time of England, to the day when the last witch was destroyed. Knowing that they were coming for her, Agnes Nutter stuffed her underskirts with gunpowder and nails and took the greedy mob with her, leaving behind a note in a book of prophecies that foretold every device of what is happening these days. She even predicted the emergence of Newton the Pulsifer, a loser accountant who has a role to play in the whole story. But while the guy doesn't know it, and after losing another job, he wanders the empty streets of London. Anathema device also arrives in Great Britain. After learning from her old relative's book about the impending end of the world, the girl plans to stop it with the help of an ancient prophecy. Newton meets a homeless man who calls himself the Surgeon Witch Doctor. He conducts a brief interview with the guy and then invites him to join the ranks of the fighters against the forces of darkness. 
That same day, Newton becomes a recruit, and Mr. Shadwell initiates the lad into the details of the hunting trade, instructing him to cut notes from old newspapers. The angels decide to pay a visit to the monastery to find records of the birth of the second baby and finally find the Antichrist. In the meantime, Adam and his friends take their new pet for a walk. Gathered at the forest headquarters, the company discusses the new inhabitant of Jasmine Cottage, Anathma, whom everyone believes to be a witch. After discussing local gossip, the boys plan to become the Inquisition and go on a hunt. Anathma meets the company in the woods, and they tell the girl about their plans to catch witches. Deciding to use the opportunity, she asks Adam if he has met any unusual beasts, but the boy shrugs his hands. Apart from Dog, no one has come across him. The angels arrive at the monastery, but now the yard of the burnt, outbuilding turns out to be a paintball field. Determined to have some fun, Crowley swaps paint guns for real ones while he and his buddy look for someone to help them. The war game organizer turns out to be a former nun, but she can't help the angels. The documents have long since been burned, and she's still convinced that the Antichrist has gotten into the ambassador's family. Crowley and Aziraphale leave with nothing, and they drive through the woods just as Anathema pulls out onto the road. The girl ends up on the ground, but the angel quickly repairs all her damage, and the friends offer the stranger a ride. Aziraphale becomes so infatuated with the beauty that he adds a few speeds to her bike when he puts it on the trunk. Anathema is in such a hurry to part with the strange men that she doesn't notice she forgets the precious book in their car. Noticing this, the girl immediately goes in search of the artifact, not understanding which way to run. Without stopping to look for a way out, the angels decide to enlist the help of humans. They each have their own agents who will be tasked with the case. Aziraphale finds a book of prophecies, but he decides not to tell his friend about it and after a quick goodbye, he goes to his store to carefully study the copy. Studying the records all night long, the angel finally finds a code that can be used to calculate the data of the real Antichrist and making up a number, he calls the house of the young family. Aziraphale and Crowley's friendship began from the earliest days of Earth's birth, and the buddies have experienced many challenging historical events together, taking in great and famous people. The friends saw Jesus off together, visited Rome together, and struck a balance together during King Arthur's reign. Finally, tired of them constantly getting in each other's way, Crowley suggests that his buddy team up and continue not to go on missions but just send the same reports on what they've all done, but the law-abiding Aziraphale rejects the suggestion for fear of disappointing his superiors. The next time the angels meet in Shakespeare's time, the serpent again tries to tempt his mate. The two servants both get assignments in Ireland and Crowley offers his friend a coin to flip for the loser to take on both jobs at once, the heavenly assignment and the hellish plot to corrupt. Angel is unhappy, but he agrees after the demon promises to gather an audience for a production of Shakespeare. Each year, the friendship between the angel and the demon grows stronger, and after Crowley saves his buddy from the gallows at the Bastille, they become thick as thieves. He is the one who, at one point in time, makes a strange request to his friend. He asks for holy water. Guessing that in this way his friend is going to end his eternal life, Aziraphale refuses him, and the angels fall out for the first time. The next time they see each other many years later is in Nazi Germany, when the angel hands Hitler's followers a book of prophecies. Not having received the very book of Ein's Nutter, which now ended up in the hands of the messenger from heaven, the deceivers wanted to get rid of him, but Crowley came to the angel's aid again. 105 years later, Crowley gathers his best robbers to steal the holy water for him, and upon learning of this, Aziraphale tries to stop his friend. He agrees to give him the cherished liquid, taking a promise that his friend will not harm himself. This is all Aziraphale remembers in a second when he hears the voice of the Antichrist on the telephone receiver. But that is not what the angel needs to think about now, but how he will explain himself to Gabriel about the lost Antichrist. Meanwhile, Adam is living his normal life, walking down the street in his little village with Dog. The boy hears a scream in Anathema's yard, and heading there, he offers his help to his neighbor. In gratitude for the boy's kindness, the occultist invites him in for a drink of lemonade, but for a moment a magical horse show over the entrance detains Dog, as it protects him from evil. The master's command proves stronger than any dark forces, and the dog runs inside, causing another piece of hell to burn in him. Witch hunter Mr. Shadwell arrives at the cafe to meet his handler Crowley. After promising the mercenary cash, the demon instructs him to find an 11-year-old boy, Adam chats with Anathema, and she tells him about her ability to see the human aura. Unfortunately, she fails to see her neighbor's aura, but the girl chalks it up to chance. Aziraphale arrives at headquarters and reports to the leadership that the trail of the real Antichrist is lost, but the Archangels believe that this will no longer prevent the end of the world, and there is no need to panic.
Sergeant Shadwell turns out to be an agent not only for the demon, but also for the angel. Aziraphale calls the mercenary and instructs him to find a boy of eleven from a small village. The old man asks Newton about his progress and the boy finds something interesting. He talks about a village that has had beautiful weather for eleven years in a row, but that doesn't impress the surgeon and he orders Newton not to do any nonsense. Back to the horsemen of the apocalypse. This time the package is received by Famine, who is just in the middle of handing out rations to the people, a set of horrible synthetic foods that take away their health. Famine happily informs his assistant that he is flying to England, where he will finally be able to spread out. The friends meet in the Gazebo and exchange news, but again the angel does not tell the demon that he knows the name of the Antichrist because he is afraid that Crowley will want to reckon with the boy. There is a quarrel between the angels and the Xerophale declares to his mate that they are no longer friends, there is no common ground and they fight each for themselves. All night long, Adam reads the magazines Anathema gave him to read. The guy is so enthusiastic about the idea of saving the Earth from nuclear power that at night all the plants in the world start working without nuclear reactors, which are replaced by lemon candy. Everything Adam sees in his dream comes true the very next day. The news tells him about the Atlantis that was found by a cruise ship. Upon hearing this, Aziraphale comes to Gabriel and asks him to stop the apocalypse, but the Archangel asks his colleague not to spoil their plans. This upsets the guy, because the end of the world threatens him with revision and he will have to somehow justify himself for the sword he gave to Adam and Eve 6,000 years ago. Gabriel has brought pictures of Aziraphale and Crowley spending time together. The Archangel instructs Michael to make inquiries and the Angel contacts his man from hell, warning him that Crowley is playing two teams. Realizing that the end of the world cannot be avoided, the demon seeks a new home, but the thought of having to leave Earth depresses Crowley. The third package falls into the hands of Scourge. The blonde opens the box and finds a crown in which she will go to destroy the world. Before going to the fourth recipient, the courier opens the note and his face changes. The guy leaves the note for his wife and walks out into the middle of the road, where a truck knocks him down and the guy is transported to another world to deliver one last package for death. Adam and his friends come to see Anathema, and the guy asks for more magazines so they can learn more. Newton is going to a strange village in search of witches. Citing old age, the surgeon decides not to go with the lad, handing him all the hunter's main equipment. Already on the way, the boy is met with strange things in alien saucer and underground cities, basically everything Adam believes in. Walking with his friends, the boy says he wants to save whales, and somewhere in the sea, a kraken is rising from the bottom, taking all the whaling ships with it. Anathema prepares to meet the witch doctor the prophecy speaks of. She prepares the first aid kit, and it turns out for good reason. Newton gets into an accident on the way to the village. Out in the wasteland, the demons are preparing for the battle to come. Very soon the Antichrist, Cerberus, and the four horsemen are to arrive, after which the forces of light and darkness will rise and create Armageddon. The children bring the wounded man to Anathema, and the girl confesses that since this prophecy has come true, the others will also come true. While the girl is helping Newton, Adam looks at a sheet pinned to the wall with a picture of the devil. At this point, the friends call out to the guy, but he answers them in a way that makes everyone uncomfortable. The diplomat's family arrives at the wasteland, where they have been lured away under the pretext of digging. After talking to the wizard, the servant of hell realizes that this is not the Antichrist and that Crowley has been lying to everyone all along. Newton comes to his senses, Anathema tells him about his witch relative, the Book of Prophecy, and the end of the world. Hunter shows the witch the sheet the surgeon sent him here with and the girl realizes that the Antichrist is Adam. The boy at this time hypnotizes his friends and orders them to follow him to destroy the world and start anew. Crowley finds his friend and offers to make peace so they can escape to another planet together. But Aziraphale doesn't change his mind, he believes that the god can be persuaded to change his mind and stop everything. Then the demon returns to his lair and takes out his sacred supply of holy water. The first portion is poured on the head of one of the servants, and the second portion the demon keeps for himself. He tries to bluff Haster, but he notices the deception and Crowley has to come up with another plan on the fly. Crowley dives into a telephone receiver, but Haster chases the traitor down the telephone wire. Fortunately, the demon manages to break away, and he leaves his former colleague inside the old answering machine. Aziraphale also finds himself surrounded by his superiors, and the angel doesn't understand why his luminous colleagues are behaving at all unkindly. Aziraphale is saved from the showdown by a signal telling him that the apocalypse is beginning. 
Adam tells his friends that he will destroy the whole world, keeping only their little company alive. To impress his comrades, the boy rises above the ground and causes a thunderstorm. Anathema and Newton hide under the bed from the tornado, and the girl finds an ancestor's prophecy that says they should snuggle up to each other. It gets so hot in the room that the surgeon's map pin lights up, set in the lavender cottage, and the old man is about to run to the aid of his subordinate. Adam doesn't like his friends arguing with him, so he makes them shut up. Aziraphale contacts the higher-ups, hoping that they will let him stop the war, but it turns out the god himself wants to stage a battle, and no one will let the angel prevent the end of the world. The surgeon peeks through the keyhole at the angel, and when it's all over, he breaks in, and deciding that Aziraphale is the devil, tries to exorcise him. His carelessness causes the angel to fall into a portable and ascend to the god, never having had time to stop the apocalypse.